Exxon Mobil is contemplating withdrawing from Equatorial Guinea, transitioning its remaining investment to the local government by the second quarter of this year. As per Reuters report, this decision aligns with the company's strategy objective of optimizing its global portfolio. The potential exit signals the conclusion of nearly three decades of Exxon operations in Equatorial Guinea, during which the nation joined the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. Bloomberg News quoted Exxon Mobil as stating that the decision is in line with its long-term strategy. In an email statement, the company emphasized its focus on ensuring a safe transition of operations and supporting those affected by the change. So Exxon has decided to move out of Equatorial Guinea after being there for over 30 years. And uh, this is getting some people worried. But I don't think that people should be worried about this. I don't think that it's the end of the world. I just hope that for the length of time they have been there, the people of Equatorial Guinea might have learned how to do this whole um, process by themselves. So as soon as Exxon will leave, then the home or the local factories can just swoop in and then start doing the operations. So I don't think it's a big deal. And I know Exxon have made a lot of profit before they are leaving because I know Americans do not just get up and leave without making so much profit. I think they've made so much profit and maybe it's not that profitable to them anymore and that's why they are leaving. So if you ask me, I would say good luck to them. Let them go. <laughs> Let them go. <laughs> so, but let's move on to our next story for today. Nairobi skyline and the recreational sports have been aglow in red since Thursday in celebration of the Chinese Spring Festival, which culminates on Saturday. This festival, also known as the Chinese New Year, is China's most significant traditional celebration, symbolizing family reunions and marked by vibrant festivities. To commemorate the occasion, Nairobi's iconic Global Trade Center, among the tallest buildings in East Africa, hosted a captivating light show on Thursday evening, courtesy of the China Media Group. Additionally, students from the Confucius Institute at the University of Nairobi treated spectators to a memorizing dragon and lion dance performance near the Ferris wheel, showcasing the allure of traditional Chinese culture to an enthusiastic audience. Um, I have some small issues with things like this, you know. Um, people are free to travel and live wherever they want to go. I believe in globalization. I believe in people mingling together, people working together, people struggling together, people building a society together. But there's one thing I realize that um, most African countries allow China to do, whereby China won't allow them to do in China. Most African countries will allow China or Chinese people to come to Africa and create a place for themselves and create something we can call a little China out of China. You heard about this Chinatown, 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 Chinatown everywhere. They have it like all over the place. But have you ever wondered if someone can go to China and create a Kenyan city in China or a Nigerian uh, city in China or uh, 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 an Ethiopia town in China? The Chinese won't allow it. They would not allow it. They won't. So why are we allowing China to build their own special area in Africa? Now, let me, let me be clear. I am not saying that people should not move to Africa. I'm not saying that Chinese should not live in Africa. China or Chinese people and African people should live together. But there should be no plan or there should be no point of China creating a Chinatown in Africa. I don't think that is very helpful. I don't think so. 
I don't think so. Because China will never let that happen in China. The Chinese Communist Party will not allow that in China. They won't allow that. You hear about China having police forces and um, police force in Africa. China will never let African people be police in China. It won't happen. So why are we letting all this to happen? Why? Like I have told you before, my brothers and sisters, okay, we must all shine our eyes. We must all shine our eyes. I feel like sometimes we Africa are asleep. We Africa, we, we are too quick to forget things. That was the same thing that happened during the area before colonization. When we let the white people in, they came in with their Bible. And before we knew it, they have colonized us and turned us into their slaves. Now we are letting the Chinese in. And we are letting them carve their own cities. We are letting them have their own towns. We don't know what will happen in a hundred years from now. Maybe those towns would have grown into bigger cities. And before we know, we'll have a China in Africa. My brothers and sisters, please shine your eyes, okay? Shine your eyes. What the government in Africa is doing or are doing, I think they are really, really uh, 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 messing up. Letting these China towns all over the place. Now, China, when Chinese people come to Africa, they should mixed up with the general population. They will not have their own town. No way. There should, there should be nothing like a Chinatown in Africa. No, 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 no. Because we will never have a, a, a Zimbabwe town in, 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 in China or a Malawi town in China. Chinese won't allow it. They will never allow it. But let's continue with our next story for the day. During his address at the UPSA Auditorium in Accra, where he unveiled visions and priorities for the country if elected president, Dr. Mahamadou, the vice president of Ghana and 2024 flag bearer of the NPP, disclosed an ambitious plan to cultivate approximately 1 million Ghanaian digital talent as part of his transformative digital Ghana vision. This vision aims to leverage technology to revolutionize key sectors of the economy, including agriculture, healthcare, education, manufacturing, and finance, thereby fostering a prosperous digital economy and positioning Ghana as a digital hub while generating employment opportunities for their youth. Well, easier said than done, right? He is the vice president. Why haven't him done so yet? <laughs> you know, these people, when they are coming to power, they make a lot of promises, but when they, when they get there, nothing gets done. So I don't think that at this point in time, politicians are people we want to trust. To my, uh, in my own opinion, right, they are one of the most untrustworthy people of, on earth politicians. I don't believe in them. I don't trust them. I don't think they, 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 they themselves believe what they say. They just say things that they think people want to hear. That is why you will see people like Mahama um, going out there. I mean, John Mahama going out there to, to, try, to, turn, to try to like appeal to Ghanaians by talking about things that have no importance on the lives of the people in Ghana. That's what they do. They, f they, 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 they figure out things that will rally up the people behind them and they just say it. Whether they believe it or not, they don't care. They just say it. And then people follow them. Then after, uh, after they get into the office they want to get into, then they just forget about everything. I think people must have learned this by now, but it's shocking to see that people still fall for these simple traps that politicians set. And uh, I really don't know what to say about this for sure. You will hope that people will be more smarter by now. But I guess you'll be wrong. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on to our next story for the day. 
Madagascar Parliament recently passed legislation allowing the surgical castration of convicted pedophilias. The law approved by National Assembly on February permits the surgical castration of individuals convicted of raping minors with harsher penalties for offenders targeting younger victims. Those found guilty of raping a child under 10 will face surgical castration and a life sentence, while offenders targeting victims aged 10 to 13 will undergo chemical castration and serve 15 to 20 years of forced labor. Well, I don't know if I support this or not. Because on one hand, I want children to be safe. I want people to be safe. I want people to be punished if they cause physical or emotional harm to other people. And on the other hand, I don't think that castrating people is the right way to go. I would suggest they have life imprisonment, but not castration, because are we barbarians or what? Are we really, really saying that the only way we can fight this kind of crimes is to have people castrated? Really? Then what next? What next? So if people who are framed for committing a crime they did not commit and we castrate them, and then later on, it's found out that they did not commit the crime, but they were maybe set up by somebody or framed by somebody. What do we do? How do we reverse this act? My brothers and sisters, when we hear government officials come up with quick fix to problems, we should ask ourselves, like, what is the motive behind this? Because believe me, there's always a motive. Before politicians will come up with things like this, this kind of quick fix to problems, there's always a motive behind it. Now, there might have been, or there might, there might be a rise in a sexual violence against minors in Madagascar. That might be something going on right now. And that might be something that all of us need to be concerned about. But is chemically castrating people the solution to the problem? Is it? Aren't there other methods we can use to address this problem rather than just going this level of insanity? Really? So I think that um, people should understand that we are in the 21st century. And there are just certain things that we shouldn't do, okay? Because um, we might want a quick fist to the problem. We might just want to castrate people and say it's, the problem is solved. But that might not be a solution. That might not be a solution. So we must re-examine ourselves. Because let me tell you one thing, my brothers and sisters. The only difference between us, the same people, and the insane people is the way we behave towards them. If we behave insanely to insane people, then we ourselves are crazy. We must learn to be better than our offenders. We must learn to be better than those who hurt us. And we must learn to treat those that cause us pain and harm better, just to prove to them that we are way more better than them. Because without that, there is no difference between us and them. But you guys out there, let me know your take in the comment section below. 
What do you think about the stories we cover today on this show? And also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do that because we appreciate it very, very much. Kindly like the videos, kindly share the video. That is going to help us a lot. And uh, until next time that we meet again, please be safe and uh, take good care of yourself. Thank you. Goodbye.